This is a very painful story for me to share. I hate to admit that I was so naive, but I was in a situation where I had a working wife, two small kids, and I was in a different city with the airline that I was working for. I had to commute to New York. And so if I had a car problem, I would leave my vehicle at a local repair shop. And I started to become suspicious because of the type and frequency of repairs that I was being told I had to have. Uh, that kind of came to an end for me when I bought a lifetime brake package. And about three months later, the car started to pull uh, very hard to the right. And not only that, it shook as it did it. I thought this was suspicious since I just paid for a lifetime brake package. So I took the car back and I said, hey, something's really wrong with these brakes. And so they looked at it and came back and they said, well, yeah, you don't have enough material on your front rotors for us to turn them. We're going to have to um, actually replace those rotors. Your parking brake cables are dragging and that's uh, what's caused uh, the rapid wear on your brakes. And I said, I just paid for a lifetime brake uh, situation. It was almost $450. And I said, well, yeah, none of this is covered because it's, um, you know, we only warranty the front brake pads and not the rotors. And also, uh, your, your problem with your rear drums is caused by the parking brake cables dragging. Um, so your bill is going to be $1,250. By now, I had started using another mechanic that came highly recommended in the area. And so for me, I called him and I said, hey, this is what's going on. I've already paid these guys $450 uh, for a lifetime brake package. And now they're saying it's going to be another $1,250. Ask them to put it back together, even if they say it's unsafe, and get the car to me. And they said, I, th I can get you on the road for under $300. So that's what I did. And they whined and complained and threatened. And so I drove my car over to this other mechanic. And we went through things one by one. The parking brake cables weren't dragging. There was plenty of material on the front rotors. Uh, so all they had to do was machine the rotors. Um, in the back, uh, the problem with the drum was because they had mismachined it. And so I did have to replace a drum in the back, but it was because they botched the lifetime brakes uh, job that they were supposed to have done. It was so bad that one of the rear brakes wasn't even working. So I had to buy a replacement brake drum. The total cost was $325 and my brakes were perfect. So that was kind of the final wake up call about the garage that I had trusted. And later, after I had been using this other shop for a while, it cut my car repairs down to just a fraction of what they had been before. I had a situation where my son was in school. Uh, this is a few years later, and he was actually in college now. And I had a situation where I had to have his car towed to this a garage that was open in the area because someone had stolen the tires off of his vehicle, including the wheels, and left it on cinder blocks. So I made arrangements to have the car towed. The only place that was open was this one garage that I just dreaded using. But they had inexpensive prices on tires, and so that was what I figured, well, I'll just buy the tires. And meanwhile, I had arranged to get four excellent wheels uh, from a Buick LeSabre that had just been retired. And so I had everything set up. Well, naturally, uh, I got there and they started their song and dance that the ball joints are worn out and your shocks are worn out and uh, you you really need brakes. And I said, well, thank you. Just put it back together. Thank you for your tires. And so I took it to my honest garage and the ball joints were fine. The shocks were fine. The brakes were fine. And uh, a little bit later, I went in to have the tires rotated there at that other garage and while I was there a widow I had her car in for maintenance and they took her into the back room and they started giving her a whole laundry list of things that she needed 
and absolutely had to get done for safety. She came out in tears and said, I can't afford that, you know, $2,200. I just can't afford it right now. I just lost my husband. And it really, really irked me. They're trying to steal from a widow. And that's when right in front of them, I said, these guys are crooks. You know, they're known for fraud. You need a second opinion. I have a business card for, card for an honest shop. You need to go there. And they had to pick their mouths up off the floor, but I was ready to go to fisticuffs. You know, it's one thing to pick on me and hurt my young family when we were the most vulnerable, but picking on a widow, man, the sad thing is I know that these guys actually were involved in a local Baptist church and to steal from a widow. And I'm sure that about half that stuff she really didn't need, or she could have sequenced it to do it in a better situation as far as her budget. So it pays to really know uh, your, your mechanics. Also, there's some things that I'm going to cover in future videos that are really good tips where to this day, I have my local Honda dealership, I mean dealership, try to take me for maintenance that the vehicle isn't required to have. I have both the factory um, maintenance intervals for normal driving and severe driving, and they're telling me I have to get all this stuff done more frequently than even the severe driving schedule. So it pays to do a little bit of homework. I'm going to point out some other tips. Introducing Car Wizard. He has an excellent YouTube channel. I'm just going to take a, a little over a minute of one of his videos just to show you. Yes, the dealers will cheat you. The customer took it into a dealership for an oil change. And the dealership tried the scare tactics and tried to scare the crap out of the guy. There's huge engine oil leaks. There's huge problems. There's going to be two grand to fix it, blah, blah, blah. I get it to the shop because he trusts me. I put it on the lift. There's not a drip to be found anywhere. Here's the picture. Do you see any leaks under there? Do you see any drips? It's dry as a bone. I was almost tempted to have the guy go back to the dealership with me and say, show us the leak. Show it to us. There isn't one. 